I mean, love is, love esteems others better than us. It doesn't save those that, that we love. It says everybody, if you want to walk as Jesus walked, we, we esteem them better than us. We don't look down to anybody. We don't look down at any, anyone, anyone, anyone. We esteem others better than ourselves. Jesus prayed for his executioners. While they're putting the nails in his hands, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing. And the other thing is, love in Philippians says that we don't take account of our own things only. We account for what others need. So we're there to be a need filler. We're there to love and to give into other hands to make their lives better. I mean, at the end of the day, we're called to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, right? And the fruit of the Spirit is something that's in our heart. It's manifested by our words. It's manifested by how we deal with people. You know, even when you don't like someone politically, the Bible tells us to pray for that person. You know, I mean, you can have an opinion. I'm not going to vote for that person. But you don't put that person down. Pray for that person. You know, at the end of the day, God's in charge. So we, we need to learn how to put a governor on our tongue so that we're speaking life, we're speaking love, we're edifying, we're bringing someone forward. You know, and love, walk, the walk of love can diffuse it says that we, we heap hot coals on their head when we, when we what? That we forgive them and love on them, you know? And so we, that, that, that's what sets us apart. You know, I, I've been talking through the whole process in the, here in the themes of the book of James where, you know, we are different than the world. You know, we, we learn revenge on a playground. Fifth grade, sixth grade, a snowball fight. You can't, you can't be the last guy. You know, you, you, it, whatever it may be, we learn to get revenge, to get the last shot. And the Bible teaches us the opposite. The Bible teaches, what does love do? It absorbs. Love absorbs wrong. It doesn't retaliate. It absorbs wrong. We know they're wrong. God knows they're wrong. They may even know they're wrong. But we don't retaliate. We don't re get revenge. We pray for those that despitefully use us and persecute us. You know, that's the difference in us that's in those in the world. They grow up by their standard. We grow up by a different standard. We grow up, Jesus said, as they're executing him, Father, you know, don't hold this against them. I pray for them. They don't know what they're doing. They're ignorant. And that's what sinners are. They're ignorant. Look at Paul. I mean, you know, God, God took somebody that didn't walk with Jesus, was saved after, to write two-thirds of the New Testament. He killed Christians. He made orphans of kids. He destroyed families. He arrested men and women and put them in prison. Yet God took him and, and revealed himself to him, changed him, and then Paul went in front of people whose lives he destroyed and taught them. You know, what a great testimony to see somebody that God changed like that. And he did that to reveal to us that no one is too far to be saved. You know, and so when we look at our words, in fact, when we look at the, the, what we call the sinner's prayer, right? In Romans chapter 10, it says the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, which means that that word is in you already. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth and in your heart already. It's not something you're guessing on. It's in your heart that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, so we, we, we say that, but we've learned already that faith or believing has to have a corresponding action, Right? And we, 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 now we believe that our words have to line up for it, with it, that our words have to edify and love and bring exhortation to other people. And so when we look at us being a Christian, we have to be completely different than the world, guys. We have to change our life to a point where we are different. They look at us 
and they see they may say weird they may say you know lost they may say he's crazy she's crazy but we serve a god and there's nothing that they will say you know against us in the last days i have many people that looked at me like i was crazy when i got saved i'm italian from detroit and but over my life many have come to me at dark moments in their life and have asked for wisdom have asked for prayer because they knew who i was you know and so while you know at first people speak against you they will respect you because if you're doing what you say you're saying what you who you are then they will look at you through different lenses they will look at you as christians because you're speaking as christ you're speaking as love you know, and that's our job. Our job is to bring others into this life. You know, our jobs are to be different. You know, when, when the Bible tells us to go in the world and preach the gospel, you know, when, when we look at that great commission, with that great commission is the Holy Spirit with us. You know, we don't know, I don't know what I'm saying today that will touch someone's life when this curriculum is done. I don't, there's a fragment of it where somebody picks up something you know, somebody picks up something from session two and, you know, just, it, it gets them. We don't know what the Holy Spirit's doing. We just do. We just go. We just teach. You know, we go out into the world and we reflect who we are. And, and people don't like hypocrites. They like somebody who is steady, somebody who speaks the truth. And we grow into that so that our words reflect our heart and our heart reflects Jesus. And, you know, I, you know, we could teach a whole series on words. I, to me, you know, I, I think this, the whole series of James is to change us to be the, the people of God. You know, that we, we, we have grown up and some of our doctrines right and some of our doctrines wrong. But to bring the right paradigm, the right way of thinking and looking at the earth and who we are in the earth to be able to reflect what God desires of us. You know, our, our first curriculum was all in, covenant through the eyes of God, right? You know, this one is the themes in the book of James. But after, you know, after you look at it, both of them are the same. They're leading us to maturity. You know, I'm a teacher that leads us to maturity. And, and so our words are very important. 